Good morning everyone. This is T Bube. And we are here again with yet another story from a standard 12 book, Flamingo. And the name of the story, as you can see, is written on the screen. That is Going Places, written by A. R. Barton. Before I discuss anything else, let me repeat my same sentence how this lecture has been organized. It has been organized in six steps. First of all, we will be discussing the title of this story. Under the second heading, we will be discussing about the author. The next topic that we will take up for the discussion will be theme or central idea. Then we will have uh, going places, understanding the story in detail. At the end of the detailed discussion, we will have a summary of this story. And finally, I will show you the analysis of this particular story, going places. But before we move ahead on any of these eight topics, let me ask you a relevant question that this that is related to this particular story itself. Have you thought what you want to do in your life? What your hopes, your ambitions, aspirations or aims in life are? Think about it for 15 to 20 seconds. You are in standard 12. So it's quite clear that some aims, some ambitions, some desires, some wishes, some dreams, some aspirations would be taking place in your heart and mind. Secondly, you will also be believing that whatever ambitions, dreams, aspirations, hopes you harbor in your little heart, your dreams may come true or you can realize your dreams. You can, I mean to say, you can achieve what you want to do. Your, you can accomplish your accomplish your mission. So that is one part of your thinking. The second thing that I would like you to think is about the family backgrounds that you have, your financial or you can say economic conditions, and the gap between the circumstances or the situations you are in and the dreams that you harbor. The present story, Going Places, is going to talk about this only. Gap between dream and reality. And that is why the title is Going Places. Now, let us talk about the author of this story, A. R. Barton. And I tried to search a lot in order to gather some more information on this author, A. R. Barton. But I couldn't find adequate material on him. So whatever is written in your own book, Flamingo book, uh, at the beginning of the chapter, I have included only those sentences, only one sentence is extra. So let us know whatever has been provided in your book. A. R. Barton is a modern writer who lives in Zurich and writes in English. His stories, this is an important part, his stories are based on problems concerning adolescents. Adolescents are youth, uh, be before adult you can say, before you achieve your adulthood, before you are 18 years old, 
so your 16 18 years life can be referred to as adolescence or the age of adolescence in the story going places barton barton explores the theme of adolescent fantasizing and hero worship what does this line mean adolescence adolescent fantasizing and hero worship let us understand the meaning of these two words adolescent fantasizing means dreaming making you know harboring dreams wishes aspirations without thinking without understanding how you are going to make your dreams come true is called fantasize and hero worship hero worship is admiring following or going to the extent of obsession in liking or praising an icon you can say it can be sports person it can be a singer it can be a dancer it can be any artist so if you are a fan of a particular cricketer or if you are a fan of a particular football player or if you are a fan of say an actor or an actress and you worship your idol your icon your act of worshiping your act of admiring is called hero worship so this story concentrates on two things adolescent fantasizing daydreaming and hero worship that means uh, becoming a fan of a celebrity so this is what is talking about now let us talk about the theme or central idea i think after my discussion you must have understood what theme or central idea of this story is going to be The central idea of this story revolves around dreams, aspirations, aspirations means ambition, your wish to be something and the contrast between reality and imagination in lives of working class individuals. Hmm. So here Barton is going to focus on a working class individual especially those whose economic conditions are not very sound so he wants to show that those whose economic conditions are not very sound are not very healthy their dreams sometimes may remain dreams themselves they do not become real though he does not say that they do not have the right to dream but what he hints at is that you must realize the difference between dreaming and reality. Here, Sophie is the central character of this story. So Sophie, a young girl, harvests dreams of owning a boutique and envisions a glamorous life beyond her current circumstances. So this Sophie has been taken as the lead character of this story and she dreams of owning a boutique a shop with fancy dresses and clothes and envisions envisions that means she imagines a glamorous life sometimes she wants to become a fashion designer sometimes she wants to become an actress sometimes she wants to do something else so this is she imagines a glamorous life but she forgets one thing and that one thing is the current the real background the real situation circumstances of her family however her family's financial struggles and her father's practicality cast a shadow on her dreams and making them seem distant and unattainable so there are two problems these problems are the economic conditions of her family and the practical nature of her father 
how these two things are going to be impediment or you can say deadlock or you can say hindrance in her way of uh, becoming uh, celebrating or making her dream come true then Sophie's encounter with Danny Casey Danny Casey is an Irish footballer footballer you can see his uh, image on YouTube or uh, on Google also very handsome player looks very debonair you can say attractive very handsome so this central character Sophie dreams of meet, meeting Danny Casey that celebrity this is what hero worship is a football prodigy adds a touch of magic to her life now her brief interaction with him in reality or in dream in dream here it means in dream so her brief interaction with him gives her a taste of world beyond her own a world of fame and possibilities so she dreams of meeting him and this dream of meeting Danny Casey gives her a taste of the world beyond what reality means in a way you can say she wants to run away from the ground reality and remain in her dream finally she becomes a believer in her dreams even though they may appear far-fetched to others so she lives in her dream she enjoys them but to others means we are going to see in the story to her friend Jansi, to her father to her brother her dreams appear unattainable far-fetched unachievable impractical but she enjoys her dream then another character in the story is her friend uh, is her brother Geoff Geoff her silent and reserved brother represents the allure of the unknown world outside their working class neighborhood so her brother Geoff has been portrayed or shown to be a silent or reserved character and she wants to enter his world thinking that he has different thoughts and he thinks about the different world so it also shows her fantasizing nature so she learns to be part of that world to escape the limitations of her own environment now however Sophie waits for in the story we will come to see that Sophie waits for Danny Casey by the canal and the story explores the harsh reality of dreams that don't always come true the contrast between her hope hopeful imagination and the possibility of disappointment underscores the theme of the tension between dreams and reality so this is what shows she waits for her icon to come but finally knows that he will not come so this accent underscores the word underscores means accentuates emphasizes the theme of the tension between dreams and reality and finally the last paragraph tells us ultimately the story reflects the struggle of ordinary people to escape their circumstances and find meaning and fulfillment in their lives usually what happens if you belong to a middle class family which has tight economic situations or conditions and you have high dreams which cannot be achieved so in that case what happens you enjoy the achievement of those dreams uh, dreams only in your dream so this is what is the central idea of this story it delves into the human desire for something more something beyond the daily grind and the bittersweet realization that sometimes dreams remain just that and just that is dreams so the ultimate the final theme of this title going places is that sometimes dreams remain 
just that and just that means dreams i mean just dream they do not take practical forms they do not take practical shape hope from this detailed discussion of the central theme you must have understood and why i have given such detailed discussion on the central idea or theme is because this story is not that interesting so generally students find it a little monotonous or boring so if you have the central idea in your mind you can manage to write any answer from this discussion only okay however we will have to know the story right because if you want to achieve the highest marks then understanding the story in detail is important so let us move on to that part understanding the story in detail now after we have discussed the central idea or theme of the story and have understood what this story is going to be let us understand the entire story in detail that means we are going to see how the story is going to unfold scene by scene going places so let us see the starting part of the story what happens at the beginning of the story have a look at the first scene what is the first scene sophie's dreams and aspirations so when you open your book your chapter then this story begins with a conversation between two girls sophie and jancy both of them represent two different uh, ideas two different personalities how let us see have a look at the first point sophie and her friend jancy walk home from school so you make a mental picture of two girls sophie and jancy coming out of their school and going towards their houses so this is the scene while they are walking home from school sophie expresses her dream of opening a boutique so while these two girls sophie and jancy are walking home from their school sophie is talking about her dreams or you can say aspiration what she would like to do after leaving her school and she says that she would be opening a boutique but her friend jancy is doubtful due to the need for money so when sophie says that she wants to become uh, she wants to open a boutique someday jancy her friend understands the problem she becomes doubtful she is skeptical because she is a practical girl she lives in reality and understands that opening a boutique needs a lot of money and sophie does not belong that kind of family that can provide her the required amount of money so she is a skeptical but when sophie is talking about her aspirations of opening a boutique sophie is determined and believed if she cannot open a boutique then she will become a manager in a company so when jancy makes her realize the practical circumstances when her friend jancy forces her to see or understand her current circumstances current financial background the economic situation then she changes her aspirations she changes her dream and says that then she would like to become a manager but jancy is doubtful about that also she says that no company is going to make her manager straight away then again as soon as sophie 
understands that becoming a manager is also a difficult uh, job to get, then she changes her dream and says that in that case, if she cannot become a manager, then she would become like a Mary Quant. Now, who was Mary Quant? She was a fa fashion designer. So she says that if she cannot open a boutique, if she cannot become a manager, then she would like to become a fashion designer. Like Mary Quant was very famous. When Sophie says this, one dream after another, Jansi understands that she is fantasizing. She is daydreaming. She is talking about all the dreams and aspirations which are not going to be really true, not going to be realized. Then Jansi becomes melancholic. Melancholic means sad. So she becomes sad because she knows as they both are likely to work only at a biscuit factory. So they are earmarked, they are suitable for working at a biscuit factory. And here, Sophie is dreaming of opening a boutique, then becoming a manager, then becoming a fashion designer, then becoming an actress, and discussing on these hopes and aspirations, both the girls come near Sophie's house. Sophie enters her house and Jansi standing in uh, the street on a rainy day takes or moves towards her house. Then what happens in the story? Let us understand. And this is the detail part. Now wherever you like, you can pause and the bold sentences that you can see are the meanings of like uh, Mary Quant. Mary was a British fashion designer and a prominent figure in the fashion industry during 1960s. So these are the explanations so that you may not face any difficulty in understanding any word, any phrases. So here you can pause the video wherever you like and this question is likely to come in your exam. And this is how you should write your answers. Now moving to scene number two, we have understood what happens next. Look at the second slide. Here we are coming to know about Sophie's family and their fam uh, and their financial conditions. Look at the first point. Sophie's family is introduced here: her father, mother, little brother Derek, and older brother, brother Geoff. So let us see the family conditions of Sophie. Then Sophie's father is eating dinner while her mother is doing household chorus. So when Sophie enters her house, the scenes in front of her eyes are different from what she has been hoping and aspiring. Before entering her house, she had, has been talking about becoming, about opening a boutique or becoming a manager or becoming a fashion designer or becoming an actress. But when she opens her house, the scenes and situations are totally contrast. They represent the actual conditions, actual situations, realities in front of her eyes. So her father is throwing meal with a spoon and from a look itself it can be said that he belongs to, we cannot say uh, lower class but of course at the bottom rack, at the bottom shelf of the middle class and her mother is washing dishes in a sink so because her mother is washing dishes in a sink so this scene also explains their family 
uh, their financial condition of the family. And then, but Sophie, despite all those scenes, Sophie is lost in her thoughts and considers her family's financial situation. She is in her dream. Then, she goes to her brother Geoff, who is, who is Geoff? Geoff is an apprentice mechanic. And Sophie is jealous of his silence. So in the story, we see that when she goes to her brother Geoff, he is tinkering with, tinkering with his uh, bike. And he is a silent and reserved kind of fellow. Now, look at the last point of this slide. Sophie wishes to be closer to Geoff and explore the world outside. Can you answer a question here? Why does Sophie wish to be closer to her brother Geoff? Answer lies in the question itself. And uh, it also lies in the highlight, second part of this point. So, you can expand this point further and if you can expand, your answer will be perfect. So, this question can come in your exam. Why does Sophie want to enter her brother's world? I am giving you some hints. Number one, Sophie is a daydreamer. She is such a girl who remains in dreams, aspirations, fantasizes, weaves a world of uh, imagination around her. And when she finds that her brother, Geoff, is silent, reserved, not sharing any thought of, you know, not, share, not sharing any thought with anyone, so she is jealous because she thinks that his dreams, his aspirations are different from hers and therefore she wants to enter them. So this is the thing that you are going to see in this part of the story. You read the detail here and I have provided each and every detail wherever you can find difficulty in understanding the story because this story has a number of difficult phrases and words which will create problem in understanding but I have given each and everything. Moving on to the third slide. Have a look at the third slide. Look at the bold part. Sophie's wish to get closer to her brother to break into his world. Now, I have already discussed in the previous slide that Geoff's silence or you can say his habit of not sharing his thought, remaining lost in his own world, makes Sophie jealous of him. So when she goes to her brother on that particular day, he is working on a motorcycle in his room, talking about Geoff. And Sophie is curious, curious means eager, interested about Geoff's life beyond what she knows. I have already discussed. So, Sophie wishes to be part of her brother's world and go on adventures with him. One dreamer thinks that the other is also dreaming and uh, the other person's dreams are fancier or more colorful than her own. So, she wishes that if her brother would allow her to take into her thoughts, into her dream, both of them would go on adventures and it will be fantastic. The world will be welcoming them, they will be clapping for them, there will be admiration, there will be cheer all around as if you must have seen serials and films. So, she thinks like that. But Geoff is reserved and does not easily make friends. He is 
different from his sister. Sophie wishes to break break into Jiap's world and share his experiences. But we have seen both the characters here, the differences between the two, and to help you understand the detailed story, you can read each and everything here. He was kneeling on the floor in the next room, tinkering with a part of his uh, motorcycle. Everything has been explained by me. So you can go through the detail. And uh, each and every sentence has been explained by me. So you pause the video and understand that part. Now, again, if you remember the central idea of this story, I told you that this story is about hero worship. This, that part of the story is coming to this slide. Sophie's encounter with Danny Casey and I have already discussed, I have already told you who Danny Casey is. Danny Casey is a football player of Ireland or you can say Irish football player, very handsome, very happening, very dashing, another word debonair and very popular, very handsome. You can uh, see his photo, his videos also available on YouTube. So Sophie mentions meeting Danny Casey to Geoff. Now, because why, 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 why does she want to make her brother jealous of her? So because he does not allow her into his own dream, so she thinks that she will make him jealous of her dream. So she cooks up a story. She makes up story and says that she has met the football sensation Danny Casey. When she says, look at the second point, Geoff is surprised and doubts that she is telling the truth. So he asks her uh, to share the details of her meeting. Sophie describes her encounter with Danny Casey that well she was standing in the arcade. Arcade are the rows of street, uh, shops, rows and rows of shops, malls, glittering lights and with covered passage you can say. So this Despite her describing the scene and place and each and every detail of her meeting with Danny Casey, Geoff is still doubtful about her story. So Geoff expresses disbelief but agrees that he would not share this story of Sophie to, her, to his father. But she knows that he will be sharing the story of her meeting with Danny Casey to their father. Then the family discusses Danny Casey's potential as a football player. Now Sophie is a very smart girl. She knows that her entire family, her father, her mother, both her brothers are great uh, fan of Danny Casey. And if she makes a story out of it, they would be interested. So this is the story that covers this part. You read the entire detail. I have given each and everything over here so that you can understand. Pause the video and read it wherever you like. Now moving on to the next slide. Slide number Slide number four, five. Here we are. The family's weekly pilgrimage, pilgrimage to watch football match. In my previous slide, I was talking about this only. That family watches, the family goes to watch a football match in which Danny Casey is also going to play. So Danny Casey scores a goal and Sophie feels proud of him. Geoff is ecstatic. Ecstatic means, here the word ecstatic means extremely happy about the game. 
a conversation on Danny Casey's nationality takes place on the bus while returning after the match. And Derek, that means Sophie's younger brother, leaves Ireland will win, uh, will win the World Cup. So this also shows Sophie's hero worship. And the detail of the story is here. You just pause the video and read the entire story. Now, this slide takes you to the next scene between Jansi and Sophie. So Jansi's promise to keep Sophie's secret. Let me take you to one of the previous slides. In one of the previous slides, we have seen that Sophie tells her brother Geoff that she has met Danny Casey. And her brother Geoff has talked about this to Jansi's brother. So, Sophie talks to Jansi about her meeting with Danny Casey. Sophie tries to keep it a secret. And Jansi offers her trust and promises not to reveal. Let me read out this part of the story. What's this you have been telling? Jansi said next week. About what? Then Jansi said. Your Geoff told our Frank. Your Frank means uh, Jansi's brother. Your Geoff told our Frank. You met Danny Casey. This wasn't an inquisition. Inquisition means inquiry, means uh, trying to know. But Jansi being nosy, but uh, Sophie was startled. Startled means surprised. Oh, that Jansi frowned. Sensing she was covering. Uh, yes, that. Uh, well, yes, I did. So, you never did, Jansi explained. Sophie glared at the ground. Damn that Geoff. This was a Geoff thing, not a Jansi thing. It was meant to be something special just between them. Something secret. It wasn't a Jansi kind of thing at all. That, tell that gawky Jansi something like that and the whole neighborhood would get to know about, know it. Damn that Geoff. It was nothing sacred. So, so far as Sophie is concerned, she thinks that her brother Geoff should not have shared this secret to Frank, Jansi's brother, because if Jansi comes to know, she will spread it everywhere and she will not keep it a secret and it will, it will reach to her father. But Jansi promises that she will keep the secret. Now, moving on to the next slide and this is here. Sophie waits for Danny Casey and imagines. Remember here the word? Imagines. Imagines Danny Casey is coming. So this is again a kind of uh, imagination, daydreaming. It is dark. Look here. After dark, Sophie waits for Danny Casey by the canal. She imagines, again, she imagines his arrival and their meeting. So, Sophie imagines that Danny Casey will come and meet her. She considers the possibility of him not showing up. But soon after this thought, another thought takes place in her mind that Danny Casey may not come. And when this feeling comes in her mind, Sophie feels a growing sense of resignation and sadness. So when she has a feeling that Danny Casey may not come to meet her, she becomes sad. She becomes, you know, gloomy, she becomes frustrated, you can say. And she anticipates 
anticipates means expects having to face her family's doubts and thinks that if Danny Casey does not come and meet her. Now, before we move on to the discussion of this particular slide, you think about the previous scene. If you can recollect that scene, you will be able to connect one scene with another. I check your mind to that particular scene where Sophie is sitting uh, by a canal waiting for her icon, Danny Casey, to come and meet her. And a number of thoughts are, you know, emerging in her mind. Sometimes she feels, she imagines him coming. Sometimes she becomes frustrated or sad. Again, picturizing or uh, making a mental picture that he would not be coming. And once she starts feeling that he would not be coming, then she becomes sad. She becomes, uh, uh, what, you, what other words can you say, frustrated. And finally, thinks that her family members, her father, her brother, Derek, Geoff, would be taunting her if they know that Danny Casey did not come and meet her. And now you come to this particular slide. You look at point number one. Sophie heads home, glad her father is at the pub. So while she is heading home, frustrated, sad, she finds she sees that her father's cycle is at the pub. So she is happy that she would not be meeting her father at home. Then again, on the way also, she recalls her meeting with Danny Casey in the arcade. So every time her mind switches from one scene to another. And then on the way home, she remembers Danny Casey's green eyes, shy smile. And finally, Sophie replays the encounter in her mind and relieves the excitement. So she goes into a flashback, making a mental picture of Danny Casey coming and meeting her and standing just in front of her, his, his, his green eyes, his beautiful, attractive smile. So all these things make her feel excited and she enjoys all these. So she is a big dreamer, you can understand and this is the detail. You can pause the video and this is slide number 9. Let's move. Remember what we have discussed in slide number 8. Sophie goes into a flashback of meeting Danny Casey once again. Look at the first point. Sophie revisits her meeting with Danny Casey in the arcade, again same thing. The scene is a flashback to when they met. So she is making a mental picture that at a particular time Danny Casey had come in the arcade and met her. She is remembering that particular time. Sophie initiates a conversation and asks for an autograph and they were in her imagination. She is asking for an autograph from Danny Casey. And Danny Casey, in her mind, is polite and gentle, with a freckled nose and green eyes. So freckled nose, nose that has freckles. Nose that have freckles on them. You can see his uh, image on Google or on YouTube. You can understand it better. They both realize they don't have a pain and Sophie waits alone for a while after he leaves. And after that, when she asks for an autograph from him, so he says that he doesn't have a pain in because of which she is not getting his autograph. And she remembers 
the moment vividly and the impact it had on her. So in one sentence we can say she is a big dreamer, daydreamer and this is the detail everything is given over here. You can pause the video and read the story in detail. Remembering Danny Casey, a lasting impression. Now we go back to slide number 9 and recall all the points that we discussed. Sophie recalls Danny Casey's recent football match. She remembers the crowd's reaction to his goal and the scene highlights the admiration and fascination Sophie has for Danny Casey. The story ends with Sophie reliving the moment she met Danny Casey in the arcade and the impact she had on her. So this is the end of this story and this is the detail. It is possible that there might have been some cases, some scenes where you might not have, uh, you know, uh, understood that clearly. It is possible because this is a recording. So in that case, when you repeat it, you revise it and read it, it can become clear, I think, in one hour. And then if anything is missed out, left out, here we are on the summary part. And as I was telling you, it is possible that you might not have understood a particular sentence or a particular point that I discussed. So the best thing is to understand everything through the summary. So look at the first paragraph of this summary. And it should not take much time because everything has been discussed in detail. Right. So going places by A.R. Barton is a short story that revolves around Sophie, a young girl with big dreams, we have seen how she is dreaming of uh, opening a boutique, becoming a manager, becoming a fashion designer, or you can say becoming an actress or even meeting Danny Casey. So these are her big dreams and her encounter with the famous footballer Danny Casey. Sophie dreams of having her own boutique and aspires to a glamorous future. Her friend Jansi is a skeptical knowing their financial constraints and Sophie's father's resistance to ambitions. So Sophie is just contrast to, uh, sorry, Jansi is just contrast to Sophie because she is realistic. She is practical. She is not a day as a daydreamer as uh, Sophie is. And then Sophie's brother, Sophie's older brother Geoff is a quiet mechanic who seems to hold secrets about his life outside their neighborhood. Sophie yearns to be part of that world, that means Geoff's world, and envies Geoff's independence. Geoff's independence. Her chance, her chance to escape her mundane life comes when she unexpectedly meets Danny Casey, the Irish football prodigy in an arcade. They strike up a conversation and Danny offers to give her an autograph, autograph later because he does not have pain, nor does Sophie has. Then Sophie excitedly shares her encounter with her family, but her family and brother are skeptical. Skeptical what means doubtful. They doubt that she is telling the truth. Still, Sophie clings to the belief that her brief interaction with Danny Casey holds a special significance. So, she decides to wait for him by the canal for their next meeting but faces disappointment when he does not show up. As she contemplates, the word contemplates means thinks, imagines, as she contemplates her dashed hopes, as she contemplates her dashed hopes, means she thinks about her hopes that are not uh, materialized here means when Danny Casey does not come to meet her, her hopes of meeting her are dashed, shattered, broken and Sophie grapples with the burden of sadness. She realizes, her, she realizes that her family may never believe her story but she cherishes the memory of her encounter with Danny Casey, the symbol of her dreams and aspirations. And finally, Going places is a poignant exploration of youthful dreams. 
the clash between reality and imagination and a longing and the longing for a better life the story delves into themes of aspiration disappointment and the power of fleeting moments to shape one's outlook on life so this is all about the summary of going places hope you must have understood and finally in one or two minutes let us uh, see the analytical part of this story summary it will give you broader understanding so let us move on to the summary part now after we have discussed the summary of this story let us move on to the analysis part so first of all let us begin with plot and this exposition part begins includes beginning middle end of the entire sequence of events all these terms have been discussed in the first lecture that is in the last lesson so if you want definition of all these terms please refer to that lecture so the story as we have seen introduces sophie a young girl with dreams of owning a boutique then becoming a manager then uh, becoming a fashion designer so this is the story that introduces sophie and her friend jancy then sophie's family and modest lifestyle then what are the rising action of this story sophie's encounter with danny casey the famous footballer triggers her dreams of a more glamorous life so she is a dreamer big dreamer but so far as opening a boutique then becoming a manager then becoming a fashion designer then becoming an actress and living a luxurious life is a part of her dreaming but the climax of all her dreams come when she fantasizes of meeting danny casey so that is a the climax then sophie's anticipation that is those are sorry that is rising action now sophie's anticipation and excitement build as she waits for a promised meeting with danny casey by the canal so this is the climax of the story when she goes to the canal thinking knowing it very well that uh, or she is cooking up all this story but in order to pretend that she has a uh, she has an appointed meeting with Danny Casey the Irish footballer is the climax of this story now what is the falling action so far as the falling action is concerned Danny Casey does not show up leading to Sophie's disappointment and realization that her dreams may not come true so this is the falling action of the story finally conclusion of this story is when we are talking about conclusion then the story concludes with sophie reflecting reflecting is thinking on the significance of a brief encounter with danny casey and the burden of her unfulfilled dreams so this is the conclusion talking about characters we have seen the main character is sophie is the main character the protagonist a young girl with ambitious dreams and desire for a better life Sophie is the protagonist or you can say the lead character Sophie's friend who is more practical is another character in the story Geoff is also a very important character so Sophie's older brother a mechanic with a mysterious life outside their neighborhood is another important character in the story Danny Casey a famous footballer who briefly interacts with Sophie sparking her aspirations though in her dreams or you can see imagination so he becomes a character in this story setting the story is set in a working class neighborhood emphasizing the contrast between sophie's dreams and her modest surroundings the canal and the arcade serve as a key locations where so where significant events take place moving on to the conflict what is the conflict the central conflict that means the contrast the dream the the situation the central conflict is internal because it rises in sophie's mind within sophie as she grapples with the tension between her dreams of a gram glamorous life and the reality of a family's financial limitations her disappointment in the cases no show also adds to the conflict so this is the conflict of the story talking about the theme we have already discussed the theme the story explores themes of aspiration 
disillusionment and gap between dreams and reality. It highlights the universal desire for a better life and the impact of fleeting moments on one's outlook. So these moments, dreaming moments are fleeting moments. Tone, what does the author intend us to react, how respond? The tone is a mixture of hope, disappointment and resignation. It shifts from excitement at the prospect of fulfilling dreams to the sadness of unfulfilled expectations. Point of view. The story is told from a third person limited, limited perspective, primarily focusing on Sophie's thoughts, emotions and experiences. Symbolism. Danny Kisi symbolizes Sophie's dreams and aspirations. The canal and the arcade symbolize the contrast between the ordinary and the extraordinary Sophie's life. Moving on to foreshadowing. The story foreshadows, that means gives uh, the initial part of the story gives you the hints what is going to happen in the story is called foreshadowing. So the story foreshadows Sophie's disappointment when Geoff expresses skepticism about Danny Casey's promised meeting. So that is uh, foreshadowing means the place where uh, Sophie is talking to her brother that she has a meeting with Geoff, uh, uh, she has a meeting with Danny Casey and she would be meeting him. So that is the foreshadowing. Irony is present in Sophie's anticipation of a life-changing encounter with Danny Casey, which ultimately leads to disappointment and disillusionment. Style. The author employs a straightforward and descriptive language to convey Sophie's inner turmoil and her yearning of a better life. The use of dialogue and inner monologue helps readers connect with Sophie's character. And what is the mood? The mood is, the mood evolves from hope and excitement to disappointment and sadness, reflecting the shifts in Sophie's emotional journey. Finally, going places, finally, going places by A. R. Barton crafts a poignant means emotional narrative that delves into complexities of youth dreams and harsh realities of life. Through Sophie's character, the story captures the universal struggle between aspirations and limitations, leaving readers with a sense of empathy and reflection on significance of fleeting moments in shaping one's perspective. Perspective means your outlook, your views, your opinions are called perspective. So it is all about going places, hope you must have understood and uh, you take my question, questions and practice in one week. You can score 100% marks in English. So, hope you must have enjoyed.